The time to get out of the city is now. been a crazy few years hasn't it it's uh so much has changed that it's when you look back at how things were prior to 2020 it's kind of it's kind of hard to imagine with all the madness that happened over the course of the well really i mean you think about the massive political divide that started once uh, trump got elected in the united states the uh you know the trump derangement syndrome that a lot of people are still suffering from and still locked in this delusional haze. And then two slash three years of COVID lockdowns, a lot of two plus two is five. And just the wokeness and how insane much of society has become. We've become a society of don't trust your lying eyes, trust the propaganda. And it seems to me on the ground level, when I just look and analyze the people around me in the communities and areas that I visit, it just seems like a lot of people have gone mad. And it's what I wanna to talk to you about today is actually, I think it is legitimately the best time to get out of the city. And there's a number of reasons for this. Uh, the, the first and, and foremost, most the biggest reason why uh, it's a really good time to get out of the city is because of the insanity, the wokeness. And I, when I say wokeness, I'm talking about drag queen pedophile hour at the libraries being supported by most Western governments. There is huge funding and they're even advertising on Facebook now. It's absolutely insane. The wokeness has gone nuts. The tolerance to degeneracy is is at an all-time high. Case in point, the rising crime rates and homelessness rates in pretty much every city because most cities have applied liberal policies over the course of many years. And then of course you couple that in with the, uh, the madness of the, the masks and the COVID lockdowns and the shots and how the whole, the whole trust the science, trust the experts. Don't believe the things you're seeing, but believe us, right? This whole mentality has gone crazy. And then you add in the rise of technocracy which is really where we're at now because there has been a bit of a reprise with the lockdowns and uh, that might not work in many places anymore. But the rise of the surveillance state and just technocracy in general, the implementation of AI systems used by governments to surveil and monitor the facial recognition software, I could go on forever, but that's not gonna be useful to you. I want this video to be useful to you. And I want to make a case as to why it's the best time to get out of the city. So that was the first reason <laughs> to get out of the city. And really it's a reason one, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, <laughs> stack on the reasons. The second reason that it's a really good time to get out of the city right now is there is a huge opportunity in real estate right now. And I have spent the last, well, really much the whole winter looking at real estate listings across North America. I've literally looked at hundreds of listings in a category for acreages, homestead type properties. So I've been looking at properties that have been 15 acres or more. And we set a price at about $350,000 US or less. And we analyzed hundreds of properties across North America in zones from USDA zones three through nine. And we looked at um, properties in almost every state and province in Canada. And what I've seen and what I've discovered is that there's a ton sitting on the market, more to come, and I'll explain why. Um, there's a ton sitting on the market and it's been sitting for a lot of days, a lot of properties we looked at. Actually, I would say about one third of the properties that we did full analysis of um, were around 200 days or more sitting on the market. Um, a third of those were 100 days or more, and then the other third were just passing 53 days on the market, which is the average uh, time a property sits on the market in the US and Canada. And, and of course, those numbers are going to vary from state to state or province to province. But when you stack it all up as an average, um, average time to sit on the market is 53 days. And so at the moment, there's a ton sitting on the market. And 
they're holding at prices that weren't realistic to begin with, but they're sitting there and they are starting to slide. In fact, some of the properties that I looked at six weeks ago and I've looked at again have come down as much as $100,000 in asking price. Now, when you consider that information and you consider rising interest rates, um, also the fact that it looks like we are on the precipice of a major financial correction, um, part of that being uh, small banks that are collapsing, you know, just think about some of the crypto stuff that's happened um, with FTX, uh, and then recently Silicon Valley Bank, and then a bunch of other small banks are starting to collapse. And then you consider rising interest rates and rising inflation. And then you consider the, uh, the big one, which is the final correction of the US dollar, that anybody who's been following some better economic uh, uh, economists than my, than I uh, not being one at all but looking listening to folks like Robert Kiyosaki and some of these folks that have been talking about this stuff for a very long time and have been bang on have been bang on for many years uh, Kiyosaki is really good when it comes to real estate so go listen to those guys if you want more information on that but the uh, the time to get out of the city is better than ever because of the changing environment how it's gone woke insane it's getting harder and harder just to exist in that city. And I'm not even talking about people wearing masks anymore. I mean, yeah, there's still some of those in the really liberal cities. But I'm talking about really what we see the most of right now, which is the rise in crime and poverty and the implementation of more and more draconian measures from governments. And, and governments always implement draconian measures first in the cities because more people equals more government equals more tyranny. I've always said this. And it's simply a matter of resources that makes it easier to manage people and control people in concentrations. Imagine a uh, caged animal feeding operation, a CAFO. Imagine large-scale industrial farming. Imagine prisons. Imagine places where you can round people up with less resources. It's harder to round people up in the country. And I'm not saying that that hasn't happened in the past. It certainly has under some of the great dictators like Stalin and Mao and Hitler and, and, and etc. Um, but I don't want to go down that rabbit hole too much on the differences between what happened in communism and the Holodomor or uh, what's happened under fascist governments. Uh, we have a different legal system here. We have we have the Anglo-American establishment, which uses capitalism and commerce as means of control. And that's what we're about to witness. And we are witnessing right now. Uh, when you look at the last number of years of lockdowns and, which, and whatnot, all these things were leveraged with commerce. They were leveraged with the threat of withdrawal of benefits, withdrawal of licensing, or fines. Again, commerce. Commerce is the mechanism in which tyranny will be applied, in my opinion, because in the Western world, the Anglo-American establishment, the Milner Group, the New World Order, whatever you want to call it, their method has been commerce. So this is what differs from Stalin and Mussolini and, uh, and Hitler and Mao and Pol Pot and, and, and such. We're in a different scenario. It's a, it's a, but it rhymes. Um, but just again, looking at the patterns of the last number of years, it's all been commerce to manage this. And so it's going to be commerce that um, moves to implement the proverbial, you'll own nothing and be happy. It will be commerce. And you can take warning from that and you can take a hint of opportunity from that as you can kind of see how things will continue to go. So the great opportunity right now is that there's less panic to get out of the city because we have somewhat of a reprise because the, the COVID lockdowns were so viscerally experienced by most people going and seeing people in masks and gloves and, and the absolute frenzy of paranoia of an illness that, um, well, I don't want to get too into that so that YouTube doesn't take down this video, but you know what I'm talking about. The irrationality of it all. And, um, there's a great opportunity to get out of the city right now because there's simply less competition. Now, you are going to have competition, and I'll talk about that uh, as well, but there's less competition right now. When I was looking for this place that we've decided to settle on and are very happy here, um, we were competing with 
a lot of other buyers. At the time, there was a lot of people that moved out of the cities during the COVID lockdowns. And a lot of realtors I was talking to had a name for this group of people, this new group of buyers, and they called them COVID buyers. And uh, maybe some realtors are listening to this video can chime in, but uh, up here in British Columbia, the uh, it was a COVID buyers market. Um, it was a seller's market, but the COVID buyers were the ones that were that were the ones uh, buying up all the property, and it was a highly competitive market. Uh, we were also buying at the peak of the market. Now we got this pr this property at a smoking deal, and I'll perhaps save that for another video another time, but. Um, we were able to identify some things in this property that most people couldn't see. And that was uh, primarily came down to water. Most people couldn't see that there actually was a ton of water here, but they just looked at the well and uh, left it at that. Whereas I could look at, I was able to read the geography and go, yeah, there's a ton of water here. Uh, it's called snow melt and snow capture. And uh, <laughs> this year uh, we've had about 120 inches of snow in total. It's mostly, it's, it's, it's really melting now. But so again, back to this great opportunity is right now there's less panic and frenzy to get out of the city. And there is a bit of a lull with that panic. Now that panic is going to return. But right now, there's a market where there's a lot of stuff, really good homestead category properties sitting on the market for a long time at prices that are just unrealistic. And all it really takes is coming in with an offer. And uh, you'll be able to get properties um, for significantly less. It's a great opportunity, but that's going to change very quickly or uh, very soon. I don't know exactly when, but as this inevitability in the economy, again, a lot of those factors that I mentioned earlier, a combination of all these economic factors starts to come in. There's going to be another mad dash to get out of the city and get into the country. And you're going to be com competing with more buyers who want to do the same, but you're also going to be competing with BlackRock you're going to be competing with one of the biggest uh, financial institutions that owns so much of the big corporations, financial institutions, real estate uh, companies, you name it. BlackRock owns it. And who owns BlackRock? A little company called Vanguard, which which is members are private, actually. <laughs> so they, they know the difference between public and private. Most people don't. But uh, you're going to see... Um, when we start to see real discounts in real estate, which is coming, and maybe you want to wait for that, maybe you don't. Um, but your biggest competition at that point will be BlackRock. And the way they're going to achieve you'll own nothing and be happy is through commerce, just straight commerce. And the financial institutions will throttle the interest rates and throttle the inflation rate as they do to make people go poor. And the, this is how the banks and the financial institutions get perpetually rich while most people get perpetually poor and have a declining quality of life uh, uh, standard because they, the banks create a mortgage, which is essentially uh, loaning money to you that never existed. You put down a down payment and then they created the rest out of thin air and then you're the one liable. The mortgage is one of the greatest financial scams that's ever existed. And the, the, the real gravy of that scam for the banks is that you take on the mortgage, you spend the next 10, 20 years developing and, and uh, upgrading that real estate asset. And then when they throttle the interest rates and you can no longer afford it, they either throttle the interest rates or throttle the inflation rates. And when you can no longer afford the, that asset, you walk away from it and they get it and they never put a damn thing up. They just created the money on your ass on your signing of that document to agree to those terms, that's how they will bankrupt a lot of people. And this has happened many times in history and it's gonna happen again. But again, it all comes down to commerce. It all comes down to the typical, you know, crony capitalist ways that these financial, this financial class get perpetually and perpetually more wealthy when the average individual sees a declining lifestyle. But you don't have to be on the bad side of that. You can seize an opportunity. When there's blood on the streets, that's when a lot of people get rich. Now, is that a good or bad thing? Well, I'll let you decide. But it's an opportunity regardless for people who have the ability to make a fast decision, an educated decision, and have a little bit of cash to perhaps either buy a property 
in cash or have a significant down payment so that if you have to get a mortgage, which isn't ideal, but it's it's a thing that exists and, and will allow you to probably get into a property is that you might have a 20% interest rate, but if you have over 50% down on that property, a 20% interest rate is manageable. And it's happened in the past in the 80s. It was the exact same thing here in Canada. And so it's, it's manageable if a property is cheap enough. Now, where I can help you with this, um, and I'm hoping that you know, a lot of people will just hear what I'm saying and, and, and this value, this video can provide value to you in some way or another. But I've spent the last number of months, pretty much all winter, creating a new online course because I want to help people get out of the city and get onto the land. And I know this isn't going to work for everybody and that that's all, that's what it is. I, I, I can help, but I can't help everybody. But if you're in a situation where you might have some assets that you can liquidate or you might have some cash you can spend on a property there's going to be an opportunity and it's already started where you can get out of the city and on the land at a very reasonable asking price and uh, because so much is sitting on, on the market just sitting there and not moving because people don't have the cash um, the next little blurb we see in the economy we're going to start to see more things become available. And during the lockdowns, when the COVID buyers were running out of the city en masse, a lot of these people bought properties like mine and realized two years after that they couldn't manage it. They, 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 wasn't, they weren't cut out for it. Most people aren't cut out, are, aren't more, are, are, most people don't have the skills and the desire to do what it takes to live on the land. Most people are lazy. Most people want convenience. And hey, that's fine, but I, I can't help those people. So I don't know what to say about it, but it is what it is. And um, you're going to see a lot more homestead properties come on the market because of these COVID buyers. And I actually called this out during a lot of my live streams during that phase because I was witnessing it. I was seeing all these sort of progressive liberals move out of the city because they just, it's not that they were awake to you know, the new world order at Klaus Schwab and build back better and all that. They were just not liking the inconvenience of, the social distancing and the masks in the coffee shops. And they're like, eh, let's, I work online anyways. Let's go outside. Let's go out in the city. Let's get out of the city. But when it came to the work of what it takes to live on the land, they just couldn't handle it. So I've created this course called Finding the Perfect Homestead Property. And it is a valuable tool that will teach you how to rate and evaluate land like I do. And I've consolidated my many years of experience. I've been, I've visited farms and homesteads around the world in many different climates and conditions, as well as I've worked as a consultant for the same amount of years advising people on properties to purchase. And I'm not going to have the time, nor do I anymore. I don't, I don't do consulting anymore, but uh, I wouldn't even be able to imagine to have the time to help the amount of people that are going to need it. To, to learn this information, to make the best choice to get onto the land. So I've created this course and I'm going to put a little clip of it here and check this out and we'll circle back. In my masterclass, I'll teach you a framework that you can apply to any property anywhere. You'll be able to quickly spot threats, red flags, uncover opportunities and discover strengths. I then apply this framework to over 50 properties all over North America in all different types of climates. You can watch me in real time review properties of all different sizes, prices, and stages of development. This will completely change how you find properties. You'll be faster, you'll be more confident, and you'll waste less time. So that's the course, and that's essentially how it works. I want to show you how to do it. And the only way to do it, in, in my opinion, is, is by doing it over repetition, repetition, but through technology and great tools of education and, and, and um, communication dissemination, I've been able to find a way to disseminate my experience over the course of viewing many different properties. And so my hope is that through repetition and by me outlining a framework that we use to evaluate the properties, you'll be able to go out and do it yourself without my help that you can learn these, these methods that I've used through observation over many years of just working on land and, 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 and witnessing how water moves, 
how geography can help your climate situation, how geography can create microclimates, how vegetation and wildlife can create microclimates, and et cetera, et cetera. All these things intersect in one way or another. So we've created this framework, and in the next series of videos, I'm going to lay out that framework more. And my hope is that these videos can stand alone as great pieces of content to help you. And if you want more help, then you can check out the course. We've got this waiting list up and the course will be released in mid-April. But if you want to get on the early bird uh, list and, and have early bird pricing, sign up at homestead.freedomfarmers.com. And very shortly, we'll send you some more information about the course. We'll send you the uh, early bird pricing window because if you're not on that list, you won't have access to it. And then we'll send the uh, general release date when we launch the course. And I hope it can help a lot of people. I spent a lot of time doing this and I've done a lot of consulting for people over many years in many different contexts. And I really think this can help you find the best place to settle down, get yourself out of the city and carve out a new life when all this madness continues. All right, folks, I'll see you in the next series of videos. Take care. Remember to head over to homestead.freedomfarmers.com, get on the waiting list, and shortly we will send you more information about the course, early bird pricing, and the release date. Look forward to seeing you in there.